Can I get a witness? Right. Amen. Speaking from the subject, can I get a witness? Thank you, ushers. Uh, my beloved, there are many in the church today that are ashamed of God. Uh, there are many that show up every Sunday morning uh, dressed in their Sunday best. Uh, they even got the car washed. Amen. Uh, took a bath Saturday night. Amen. And they show up at church, but they are ashamed of God. And they are ashamed of his Christ. That uh, the saints of old uh, used to have a saying in church. You, you don't hear that no more. You know, it, uh, it, it's kind of taboo. Is that not say that? <laughs> Matter of fact, when you say that now, you're calling somebody out. But the, the old, old saints used to say uh, that if, you, if, if you've been born again, you ought to show some sign. Right. Amen. Yeah. That has not changed. You cannot be born again and not show a sign. Amen. Amen. So they, they used to say, if, 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 if you've been born again, you ought to show, show, uh, show some sign. And then some of them used to say, if I can't say nothing, mm -hmm. I would just wave my hand. Amen. Because I want you to know I know the man. You know. Uh, uh, and so many people are ashamed of God, and they're ashamed of his Christ. Uh, when we look at the body of Christ, uh, uh, we will get a true picture of the church. Uh, there has always been confusion about what the church is and what the church is not. Amen. And until that confusion gets cleared up in your head, uh, then you will be able to be a witness. Uh, not, but uh, not until then. When it really gets cleared up in your head what the church is and what the church is not, then you can, you can be a witness. Mm -hmm. But first of all, you've got to know what the church is and what the church is not. We uh, come to a building. We come to a place where we congregate and many times it may be a church and it may not be a church. Mm. Uh, but until you get that uh, confusion cleared up and until you wade through all of the trash that's in what some of us call a church, uh, you will not be able to be an effective witness. Now, uh, but there's always been confusion. There's always been error uh, on who the church is and who she is not. Amen. Uh, the fact of our the fact uh, of our salvation is costly, and not only that, my salvation and your salvation causes a lot of people to ask some questions. It ought to. It ought to. My salvation was costly. Your salvation was costly, and it ought to make some people have some questions. It ought to make the world question. Uh, why do you do what you do? And why do you act the way you act? Uh, it's something different about you. Amen? Mm -hmm. So they ought to have some questions about you. Now, there are some people who think they, that they can successfully take advantage of the church. In the book of Acts, we find a husband and a wife huh? who thought that they could take advantage of the church, and they lied to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. And not only uh, did he die, but she died too. Amen? Yeah, there's some people that think, and they, they, they still think that they can take advantage of the church, but that's right. not so. Uh, you, you'll never take advantage of the real church. Amen? You may think that you got by, and you may think that you got over, but you'll never take advantage of the church. The church will take advantage of you every time. You'll lose every time. Amen? And so our text today is a reminder of the words of Jesus given to us this morning by Dr. Luke. Amen? After Jesus had risen from the dead and he had shown himself uh, unto many, uh, and, and, and he showed evidence and proofs uh, of his death, burial, and the resurrection, and he showed proof that he was, in fact, uh, the Son of God, and that uh, he did have all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He had to show some evidence. He had to show some proof, amen. And then not only that, he showed some proof regarding what he had said about the kingdom of God. Uh, when, he, when, he, when he rose from the dead, uh, many saw him, amen, and he talked to many folk, and he ate with them, and he had fellowship, amen? And then uh, the story goes on to tell us that he had also given the disciples some instructions. Uh, when I'm gone, uh, I, I, after, I'm, uh, uh, after I ascend to heaven, uh, after I go back to heaven, I don't want you uh, to jump out and try to do nothing just yet, but I want you to go up into Jerusalem, up in the upper room. Uh -huh. Amen. And then I want you to wait until you endow with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Too many times people try to do things for God and they have never spent time in the upper room. Mm -hmm. Oh, talk to me in here. Mm -hmm. Let me help you out with the upper room. Mm -hmm. The upper room is a place whereby if you were not serious about what you were doing, you could lose your life in the upper mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. The upper room was not a place to play. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
The upper room was a place where we're all together on one accord. And if you're here and you're in this upper room with us and you're not on one accord, you got to go. Amen? Because God was going to do a great work. He said, stay there until you are endowed with the Holy Ghost. And, and, and once that happens, you shall receive power. There are too many folk trying to work for God with no power. All right. And so that's why you have so much failure uh, in the body of Christ, amen? And he was taken up in a cloud as they were standing there gazing, amen? And so he said, I want you to go in that room and stay there until you're endowed with power and with the Holy Ghost. And then uh, we must also uh, uh, grapple with and contend with the fact uh, that we are to be true witnesses and not false witnesses. Amen? Uh -huh. Stop trying to witness for the Lord when you don't know how to witness. Uh -huh. now, stop trying to say what everybody else is saying because it sounds religious. Uh -huh. Amen? Amen? You'll only be able to witness for the Lord if you know him in the free part of your sin uh -huh. and if he's actually done anything for you and then it is at that point that you ought not to be ashamed. Amen. Am I saying anything? Amen. Okay. Amen. Uh, and so, uh, we, we, uh, if we're to be a witness, amen, or if we are a witness, we must be diligent, amen? You can't be a part-time witness. Talk to me in here. Right. You can't be a part-time witness, and not only that, you have, if you're saved, you've got a responsibility to witness. Uh -huh. if, you, if you've truly been born again, I'm trying to help somebody this morning. Uh -huh. if, if the Lord has truly saved you, and you know you're saved, uh -huh. you have a responsibility and an obligation to be a witness. Leviticus uh -huh. 5 and 1, Deuteronomy 19, 15 through 18. Now, being a witness is not a command. Let me say it slow for you. You see, some people believe that uh, the only way that I can serve God, uh, or the only way that I will serve God, is God has to tie me up and chain me up and uh, and put my arm behind my back and pull it every once in a while uh, for me to be able to serve him. That's not how God operates, saints. He's not that kind of God. So it's not a command, but, uh, uh, but it is the result of of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Huh? It's not, you're not commanded to be a witness. You witness because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Uh, and it's, it's, it's also uh, the power of the Holy Spirit within the believer. If you understand that you are endowed with and that you are indwelt by the Holy Ghost, then you can be a witness. Amen? And you ought to be a witness. Now, witnesses or witnessing is necessary to establish a fact from fiction. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why in, in every court proceeding, uh, uh, you have to have some witnesses. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's how you get to the truth of the matter. Uh -huh. Amen? And so witnesses are necessary. Now, if witnesses and witnessing is necessary in the court proceedings, mm -hmm. in the spiritual realm, and in the things of God, witnesses and witnessing is necessary. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because what witnesses and witnessing does in the body of Christ is it, it enables us to determine or distinguish between a fact and fiction. All right. Oh, come on here. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, very necessary, amen? And so, uh, you'll find that in Matthew 18, 19, and then John 8, 27, I mean, 8, 17, and 2 Corinthians 13, uh, 13 and 1, and 2 Timothy 5 and uh, 19. Now, uh, the witnesses that our text is referring to uh, are those who are born again. First of all, watch this. A person that's not born again, truly born again, they can't be a witness. Mm. They just go along. Hmm? That's all they do. That's all they can do. God has reserved being a witness and witnessing for him to those who are born again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, they are to be able to tell the truth about Jesus. And that's what it means to be a witness. To be able to tell the truth about Now, you can't tell the truth if you don't know it. You can't tell the truth if you don't believe it. And so, uh, we're to be able to tell the truth about Jesus. Amen. St. John uh, 14 and 26. Amen. And also, 1 Peter uh, 3 and 15. The Greek word for witness means one who will die for his faith. Or one who will die for the truth. Amen. Uh, the other word is be becoming a martyr. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die for the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, for God I live, and for God I will die. Amen. Uh, heaven and earth may pass away, 
but the word of God will do what stand forever. Amen. Uh, that's what uh, a witness does. Amen. We stand uh, not on the property and not on the premises, but we stand on the promises of God. Amen. And so um, every believer in Jesus Christ is to be a witness of and for God in all things. Amen. Uh, listen, don't come telling nobody about, you know, I got love. <laughs> Huh? Oh, lady, love was good to me. Listen, mm. understand something. Listen, the doxology mm, that we sing so well and we know so well in every church. Praise God, what? From whom? Who, what? All oh, blessings from. So why are you going to start talking about what lady love did? Mm. Mm. Huh? And, you know, my, my favorite rabbit foot. Other foolishness. Mm -hmm. huh? See, when, when, I, when I know who's blessing me and I, when I know where my blessings come from, I ought not to be ashamed to be a witness. Give God credit. Give him the glory that's due his name. Stop giving somebody else the glory that God's supposed to have. And then after that, you want to don't do that. Give God the first preference, mm -hmm. which is what, what belongs to him. Amen. So we have to be a witness uh, of God and for God in all things. Amen. And then I need to tell you that God never does anything without a witness. Amen. Uh, anything that has ever happened to you, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, because sometimes we, some things that happen to us, all we can see is the bad. Mm. Talk to me and you. Uh -huh. but, but nothing can happen to you without, first of all, God allowing it to happen. And then when it does happen, rest assured, have you ever gone through something you thought you was in it all by yourself? Yeah, when you weren't strong and didn't know the Lord like you should have, but once you know him the way you should know him, you will realize that nothing, you, there's nothing that you'll be able to go through without the Lord being with you, and everything that you go through, God got some witnesses. Right? Mm -hmm. You may not see them, but God has some witnesses, amen? And we're amen. surrounded by a great big cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. Talk to me and you, uh -huh. amen? And so we have to understand uh, how we are living. Now, uh, uh, you find that in Luke 24 and 48 and Isaiah 43, 10, Isaiah 44, 18, I mean 8 rather, and then Acts 1, 22. Now, God gave Jesus to be a witness to every believer in him. One of the reasons he sent Jesus. First of all, Jesus is the express image of God. Hmm? That's why Jesus said, you seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh, yeah. The Father and I are one. Right. Amen? Yeah. And so uh, he, 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 he came to be a witness to every believer in him, and, and, and then saints are to be a witness. Now, uh, you don't have to know the whole Bible to be a witness. Amen? You don't have to be saved 10 years to be able to be a witness. Amen? Mm -hmm. But you ought to be able uh, to, to be, a, be a witness of the birth, mm -hmm. the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's how your salvation was wrought. Mm -hmm. Amen? All the other things that happen in your life, those are just added on things that God gives you to be able to uh, solidify your belief in him and for you to be a more fervent witness for him. Amen? Now, if the Lord has never done anything for you, then you cannot be a witness of him. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, so so uh, we have to get some understanding here. Now, the word of God tells us uh, that once we're truly born again, that we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and that we're to be a witness, and we're to witness for Christ everywhere we go. Our witness <clears throat> must first start at home. Hmm? Maybe that's why we have so many raggedy to a home. Because we're over there trying to witness and over there trying to witness, but the, you have to start first in the house. Amen. Now watch this. I'm not saying that once you witness in the house, that everything's going to be well in your house and everybody's going to be saved. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is that your first obligation is to witness at the house. Amen. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but, but your witness ought to be just like Jesus said. Our job is to tell them uh, whether they hear you or not, you need to make sure you tell them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and you need to understand that this has nothing to do about blood. All right. Except for the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, nothing. So you ought to be, it first starts at home, amen, and then we're to move out into the community, amen, and the Bible tells us that we're also to be witnesses to our enemies. Okay. Mm -hmm. why, why would I do that? Why would I, why would I, why would I want to witness to my enemy? I'll tell you why. 
Because your witness to your enemy and my witness to my enemy may be the witness that redeems him to God. Right. Yeah. Oh, come on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's how God wants to use us. Now, our witness territory is not limited to the church. Many times we want to run around the church and, and, and we want to identify with folks in church that we believe are not saved. Well, come here, come here, baby. Come here, honey. Let me sit down. Let me talk to you about the Lord. Listen. That's not it. Amen. It's not limited to the church, uh, our family and friends, but it is to the uttermost parts of the world. My point is this. Everywhere you go, I don't care if it's in the whole house. You ought to be a witness. I don't care when, I don't care if it's in a prison then. Mm -hmm. To the other, uttermost parts of earth means wherever I am or wherever I may find myself to be. A story is told about a deacon in the church. The deacon was a recovering alcoholic. And uh, as, 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 as it would be, some folks saw the deacon coming out of a bar. I don't have to tell you the rest. Mm -hmm. They got on the telephone. Talking about I saw Deke coming out there. He coming out that bar. I thought he was, I thought he was so saved, blah, blah, blah. Now, what they did not know is a deacon was in the bar mm -hmm. trying to witness mm -hmm. to some of his old buddies, mm -hmm. or some of his old drinking buddies. Y'all know yeah. what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. I thought y'all yeah. Some of his old drinking buddies that was still locked up, tied up, tangled up in the bar, and still strung out on alcohol. Uh -huh. That's what he was doing in there. And yeah. some people went so far as to talk about, yeah, he was sitting at the bar and he had a, he had a cup in front of him. Well, his, in his cup was some orange juice. All right. Uh -huh. Minus the gin. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to help you. Mm -hmm. We have to be very careful when it comes to witnessing, but we also have the responsibility to go to the uttermost parts of the earth. There is nowhere that we ought to be able to go where you have to be ashamed of God. Amen. 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 Now, your witness must be, uh, 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 we must uh, be a witness in the moral uh, world, the world of morality. Call a spade a spade. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then our witness must be uh, in, the, in the spiritual order as well. Hmm? In the spiritual realm. Now, the spiritual realm can be too, 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 too toned. First of all, it can be demonic spirit. You ought to be a witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When Jesus went to hell, he was a witness. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Huh? And so therefore, if you're working around demons, mm -hmm. you ought to be a witness. That's what will make uh, Satan get off your trail. He got to move on. Mm -hmm. When you when you stand up and you start talking about the God that you believe in and who He is, they can't stay around long. Mm -mm. Uh, that's how you get them up off you. Amen. You don't have to. You, many of us we go we take a whole lot of stuff we don't have to take. Amen. And then we have to be a witness um, in the social arena. Oh, come on here. Uh, if you're so ashamed of God that you cannot talk about Him and acknowledge Him wherever you go, mm -hmm. you may not be saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. Oh, mm. you and your road dogs out having y'all having a little nip? Mm -hmm. You can't say nothing about God. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, you, you wrapped up and tied up and tangled up and messed up right there, right. because the Bible does not say that you cannot take a drink. It says don't be drunk. Right. Right. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now I'm not advocating for you to go out and be towed down. Right. I'm just trying to tell you, don't don't get so saved till you get all messed up in your theology and everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, but but you ought to still be able to be a witness because you it could be sitting at the table with somebody on the verge of being saved. All right. And maybe something that you may say might bring them on in. You don't know. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and so, uh, born again believers uh, have been given the cure for salvation. Hmm? You've been you've been given the cure of why a person is not saved or how to get a person saved uh, uh, from their sins uh, for for the whole world. And guess what? God is holding you accountable. He's holding me accountable if I don't pull out the cure. Baby, you need Jesus. Do you know who He is? Uh -huh. Do you know what He has done? Do you know what He can do? When you walking around saved. You have a cure, and you don't even know you have a cure. Uh -huh. Because many times we think the cure is just for us. No, the cure is for the entire world. Well, I'm going to get out of here. And so our witness must be, uh, it must consist of three components. Mm -hmm. Three components. The first component, our witness must be consistent. 
must be consistent. Uh, many people will tell you, I'm so all of my Lord, here she come again. That's all she talk about is Jesus. That's okay. Be persistent. Be pers keep on putting it on. Guess what? They're gonna either you're gonna either draw them or you're gonna drive them away. It don't make no difference. Mm. But keep putting it on. So our witness must be consistent. We must witness daily and without ceasing everywhere we go. Uh we we uh, Sister Jackson here, she's here today. Uh she puts daily bread all around the church everywhere. Uh-huh. We looked at it, some of us said, Lord, here you go again, you know. I'm so sick of looking at all the daily bread. Why don't you take one and take it somewhere with you and leave it somewhere? Uh-huh. Huh? Why don't you use the daily bread that's here in your church that you don't need because uh, you know all about the daily bread. You've been getting daily bread since you was knee high to a dust, blah, 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 blah. Why don't you take that daily bread, take it with you, and leave it somewhere? You don't know what it might draw. Uh -huh. You don't know how many fish it might catch. Uh -huh. You don't know that. Amen? But instead of that, don't always complain because you're so saved and you're snug as a bug in the rug. Mm -hmm. There are other people on their way to hell. All right. Amen? So it must be consistent. Secondly, our witness must be uh, courageous. You must have a courageous witness. You can't witness to anybody if you're scared all the time. All right. Mm -hmm. all right. or, you know, I just got so nervous. Hey, you know, I didn't know what to say. Mm. Well, first of all, let the Holy Ghost say. Yeah. Huh? And so it must be courageous. Many uh, times we will experience hostility. Hmm? Whenever we talk about Christ, we must be unwavering and have a faithful witness in every situation. Mm. Listen, you cannot witness for the Lord and come away a failure. You know why? Mm. He said in his word that my word will not return to Yeah. Now, you may feel like a failure. And you might, you might be in a hostile environment, but you did what thus said the Lord. Amen. When Jesus was on this earth, he was in a hostile environment, but he was a witness. Amen. Thirdly, our witness must be without error. Many times the reason that we can't lead anybody to Christ is because we got old chopped up theology that we're trying to put on folks. Mm. And sometimes the people know more about the Lord than we do. Yeah. So yeah. first of all, uh, your witness needs to be without error. We must be able to witness the truth of Christ because of the attack on what we believe and in whom we believe. We must have a witness that's without error. Because, yes, you will experience attacks uh, when you witness for Christ. Amen? Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. That's my star verse right there. And also 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17. And, of course, uh, Psalms 100 verse 5, uh, John 14 and 6, and Ephesians 4 and 15. Now, uh, I'm going to leave it alone, but I'm going to tell you a little story. <clears throat> because we need to uh, know how to be a witness, and we need to understand that God uh, wants us to witness. Amen? And so the story is told about uh, a soldier that was on the battlefield. <clears throat> you, know the story, you know the song that we sing, don't you? I'm on the battlefield. For my Lord. Yeah. Well, there was a soldier that was on the battlefield. And uh, the war was going on all around him. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he got wounded on the battlefield. And uh, he was laying down on the battlefield with blood gushing out of his veins. Yeah. He was just about ready to die. But as the story would go on, it was saying that a doctor came by and saw the man laying on the ground. And, and he was just about near death and thought he was going to die. And so he told the doctor, no, no, go on and help some of the other soldiers. Uh -huh. But this doctor had compassion on him. And so the doctor kneeled down and went into his bag. And he pulled out his bag, uh, some bandages, and he bandaged up the man's wound. And he was able to stop the bleeding. Yeah. And uh, the last thing he told the man is that uh, you shall not live, uh, you shall not die, brother, but uh, you will live. And uh, as he was getting ready to leave uh, the man uh, and go on and treat other soldiers, uh, the soldier that was about to die laying on the ground, uh, he cried out to the doctor. Uh, and uh, he wanted to know what the doctor's name was. And uh, so the doctor told him, it doesn't make any difference what my name is. Uh, you're going to live. You'll be all right. But this man, this soldier here, kept on crying out to the doctor. 
and told the doctor, I need Mr. Doctor to know your name. Yeah. The reason that I need to know your name is that um, I want to be able to tell all of my friends about this doctor that I met on the battlefield. Yeah. And uh, I want to be able to tell my children that I met a doctor on the battlefield. Yeah. And uh, this doctor uh, saved my life. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to leave you alone here, but I stopped by to tell you that uh, if you're living in the world today, uh, you're living on a battlefield. Yeah. And, uh, you need the same doctor that this man met on the battlefield. Uh, uh, you need a doctor by the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. And uh, you need to be able to be a witness uh, and tell somebody about the goodness uh, oh, of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, yeah. what am I going to tell the people? Uh, uh -huh. And uh, how am I going to witness for the Lord? Uh, uh -huh. Well, you ought to tell them uh, that Jesus uh, left heaven. Uh, and uh, tell them uh -huh. that it came down uh, uh -huh. all the way through 40 and two oh, generations. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You ought to tell them that he dropped off uh, at a little town in Bethlehem. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you ought to tell them that he was born of a virgin and uh, wrapped in swallowed clothes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then tell them that uh, Jesus is God's only begotten son. Yeah. Uh, and then tell them that Jesus is the only somebody that can take away uh, the sins of the world. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. I just stop by uh, to tell somebody, uh, oh. but tell them that I want to heal called yeah. Calvary. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them that he was arrested one day yeah. uh, coming out of a garden. Yeah. Uh, tell them that he was marched uh, from Judgment Hall uh, to Judgment Hall. Yeah. Uh, that he never said a moment word. Yeah. Uh, and then tell them uh, that he who knew no sin uh, oh. was made sin uh, oh. so that you and I uh, could be made uh, the righteousness of God. Uh, yeah. And then tell them that they marched him uh, up Galgotha's hill. Oh. Uh, and then tell them uh, that they put nails oh. in his hand. Uh, oh. Tell them that they put nails in his feet. Uh, yeah. And then yeah. tell them that the spirit is in his side. Yeah. Uh, tell them that he hung his head uh, in the locks of his shoulder. Yeah. Uh, and he gave up the ghost. Yeah. Uh, and then tell them that the soldiers uh, took him down uh, and laid him uh, in a bar or two. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. tell them uh, that three days uh, uh, and three nights were yeah. uh, early, yeah. early, early, yeah. early, early, early. I just 
stop by on my way to my heavenly home to be a witness to tell you that the Lord will make a way out of no way. Every door that they close in your face, the Lord will open a door that no man can close. So therefore, you ought not to be ashamed to be a witness. Witness for him early in the morning. Witness for him at new day. Witness for him in the evening. Way over in the midnight hour. You ought to witness. You can wake me up late at night, full day in the morning, and ask me about the Lord. And I will tell you that the Lord is my way maker. I will tell you early in the morning that the Lord is my light. I will tell you early in the morning. That the Lord is, he's my strength. I'm going to leave you alone here. Yeah. But can I get a witness? Many times we're too quiet in church. You sit by somebody and they won't say a word. You don't hear me. But you ought to have, you ought to be able to show some kind of sign. Because I know the man, I know the man that's standing down by the river. To the night. I know the man who stopped the funeral in the funeral procession, and all he got to do is just walk up to the casket and just lay his hand on the casket, and the dead will have to get up and live. I'm trying to tell you that the Lord is, the Lord is all right. And you tried the man, and you tried the man, and you ought to be a witness. I tried him in a sick room. Walk away and tell you that there's nothing more that they can do. Dr. Jesus will step in and he'll make everything all right. I tried the Lord on the battlefield and I found out that the Lord will he'll fight your battle. I'm just trying to ask a question. Have you tried the Lord? You have not tried him. You're going to try it for yourself. When mama gone, you ought to try Jesus. When daddy's gone, you ought to try Jesus. He'll step in when everybody has stepped out. But you have to be with it. Huh? That's too many shame. Huh? We saw how to find New Orleans Saints. Talk to me, somebody. Everybody holler about Patrick Mahomes. Why don't you holler Jesus sometimes? Amen. That's it. Not just be a witness. That's all he's asking you for. You holler at the we we holler at the wrong thing. Holler for Patrick after you holler for Jesus. Do you hear me, somebody? Yeah. Put it in perspective. But I'll stop by to tell you, if you're saved and you know you're saved, you ought to be a witness. Yeah. Huh? You can't help but be, be a witness if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Thank you. you can't keep it to yourself. Yes. I hear people talking about, you know, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody, but yeah. I can what? Keep it to myself. Uh -huh. you, that is correct. Yeah. I've seen folks, uh, digging this bed, trying to sit down on God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh? I've seen folks sitting in their seat about to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> And they, and they eventually did blow up. Because right. uh -huh. the Holy Ghost will blow up in you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. God bless you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, but you ought to be a witness. Amen. Yeah. Everywhere you go, mm -hmm. you ought to tell somebody. Tell somebody. Mm -hmm. And listen, it's not your responsibility. You can't save nobody. Mm -hmm. nah. Nah, you, you, so don't feel like a failure because you told them. Mm -hmm. feel, feel like you succeeded because you were a witness. Yeah. Amen. If God will do the work, the Holy Ghost will do the work. Yeah. But what about the individuals that you walk by and didn't say one of his words? Yeah. Lord have mercy on them. Because you have the cure. Mm -hmm. You have the cure. I, I, I'm so tired of Christians playing the second fiddle. Huh? And, 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 and instead, of, instead of understanding that you're the first fiddle. All right. You, but you have to know that. And the devil, he wants overtime to make you think that you're second class. Mm -hmm. To make you think that you're nothing, that you're nobody, mm -hmm. and you don't deserve anything. Let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, you're somebody. All right. You're a real somebody. Yeah. Matter of yeah. fact, uh, you have inherited the kingdom. Oh, 
Amen? You have, you have something that the unsaved will never have. And this world is not the end. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Amen? That's something to look forward to. Amen? We just stand to your feet. Amen. Let's see. Choir gives us a selection. The door of the church is open for the